Seven, here we go. I'm gone. Why there? I've just I've stopped the broadcast. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've, you put up a Singapore, haven't you? Yeah. How right. do you spell Malaysia again? You'll just have to start again on the talking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you, gonna, are you just going to completely scrub the first part of it? Yeah, I'm going to delete. That. Okay, cool. Okay, that's get, fine. Get ready. Yeah. Five, four, <clears throat> three, two, one, go. <laughs> Well, hello there and welcome to the Masters Championship. Tonight we're coming live from you from on YouTube at 9 o'clock and it's for Division 1 boys as they tackle the Malaysia track that the Division 2 guys went around a few days ago. Uh, we've already uh, just about to start the session, so um, just a couple of things to talk about quickly. Um, uh, Sir Anthony in the Ferrari and Konakina in the Toro Rosso. Neither of them are here tonight, or is Kingpin in the McLaren. So we've got a slightly depleted field, which should hopefully give those guys in the relegation zone a better opportunity to uh, get out of the relegation zone. And just looking here, it looks like it's raining for qualifying and dry for the race. Very interesting. Interesting indeed. And it is. Big points are up for grabs today. So a good qualifying is the key. But in these horrendous conditions, that could be tricky. Yeah, it really, it really can be. I did say to a lot of these guys uh, before the um, this evening's uh, festivities, if you like, uh, Malaysia has got a high percentage chance of rain in either the qualifying or the race. So I'm glad I've been proved right there. Just having a look at the weather, with about 10 minutes to go, it is supposed to change from heavy rain to intermediate. So I think, Richie, you and I are going to be staring at these timing screens for the last few minutes quite feverishly because I'm expecting that times to uh, drop quite considerably in the last few minutes. Yep. To be honest, that has been becoming a bit of a habit in it. Changing conditions towards the end of qualifying, so no change yet again today. The question is, who is going to get pole in these conditions? Any uh, predictions, Lily? Uh, in the wet, I'm not too sure. Uh, in the dry, I would have probably said that um, you know Beast S would have a good chance, but obviously he's got a qualifying ban. You know, Malaysia. I'm actually not too sure. I'm just going to sit back and just see what happens here, because uh, especially in these changing conditions, it honestly could be anyone. Exactly. But before they do get on the hot laps, want to just uh, fill in the audience with the current standings? Yes, certainly. Right, we'll start with the Drivers' Championship because we've obviously got we've got two fights going on at the top and at the bottom. Uh, at the top, Mystic Joker still leads the way uh, with 141 points, but SJP in the Ferrari has now gone up to second place in 120. He's followed by Merck in the second Red Bull on 118. And then we've got Beastas, who's obviously serving a qualifying ban tonight on 108. And then the Wesker in the McLaren on 107. In the relegation zone, Andy Russell is all but confirmed as being relegated from zero points. We've got Mark Demand on 11 points, who's been who's been very, very quick here this evening. John Heaven Terry on 17. Flair, the returning Flair in the Mercedes on 18. And then you've got Radic on 26, who's also tied with his teammate Cosworth Tom and Raphael One. So there's a real dogfight going on there for the last place. Yep. And I mean, with Radic not showing at the minute, it's a great opportunity for the likes of Raphael One pull away from him but he really he really has been struggling to get points lately yeah unfortunately oh, we John Evan Terry sorry already little spin got on the curb that's not the way he would have wanted to start qualifying but carry on Lil sorry about that yeah, I was just saying that you know, you know, points make prizes at the end of the day, and the consistency of some of these guys like SJP and Merck, who you know have only won a couple of races and a couple of podiums as well, but they're finishing all the races as Merck's had a, a bit of a wild moment coming onto the back straight there. But these guys are finishing races, picking up points, and that's why they're in the title hunt. If you don't finish races and don't pick up points, then there's uh, every reason you're going to get relegated. You know, you have to score the points. Yes, indeed. I mean, Flair rejoining zero points relegation zone and already is on 18 points so you've got to feel that flair is looking very strong at surviving this season but i just want to make a quick note beast ass he has been having connection problems all week and already he's lost connection so if he don't get no points today it could be title over 
Yeah, it very well could be, including this race. We've got, let me think, uh, six races left, so right into the thick end of the season now, where, you know, one bad result or one disconnection or one no-show, you know, that's a potential 25 points. Certainly for someone like Beast, that is a potential 25 points that he's now lost, and he's not exactly right up there anyway. He's about 30-odd points back, so uh, if he doesn't score points today and, let's say, Mystic or SJ or Mystic wins, then you could pretty much say that Beast, that, unfortunately, would be out of it. Yes, indeed. But... It's looking like Merck. He's going to be the first man to set a hot lap. He's been uh, he's been a bit worried about this race, hasn't he? Because apparently he's got no pace here, and with Red Bull absolutely dominating, well, could be a chance for maybe another team to catch up with them today, if Merck is as poor as he says he is on the track. So yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, there's a good battle at the moment in the constructors between Red Bull and Toro Rosso. Uh, Red Bull lead away on 259 and Toro Rosso only six points back on 253. But obviously they're going to take a hit tonight. No Conor Kina and Beast has got connection issues. So this is a great chance for Red Bull to really stamp their authority in first place. Further back, Ferrari in third place on 201. And they've got the intentions of Force India, who have publicly said they're gunning Ferrari down for third place. They're in fourth on 189. And then a little way back is McLaren on 168. So, uh... Very close in the constructors, just like it is in the drivers. Yes, indeed. But, I mean, in the dry, you're looking around about a 133 or something like that, really. So, what do you yeah. reckon? About 143s, 144s today? At the minute, uh, anyway? Yeah, I'd think probably in full wet you're looking about a 49.50 and then, you, yeah, a, 40, a 42, 43, something like that, I think in intermediates and, uh, yeah, I mean, if we did have any dry running, like you said, a 1 minute 33 or a 34 would be ideal for pole, but, uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment, guys are getting getting a feel for the track, we are pretty sure that in the next 5 or 6 minutes we're going to start seeing guys on the intermediate tyres, but uh, a lot of them are out there at the moment just getting a feel for the track. Yep, and Maxi Luca, he's already put it on pole position for now then. With a 150.6, and he's only a tenth quicker than Mystic Joker, so already the time's very tight, which can only lead to one thing, it could lead to a t very tight race, so I'm actually getting excited now for the race. Yeah, you always do, you get that sense of anticipation, don't you, if you're going to see something amazing, because as it's been from the first race right up to tonight, um, you, we usually have a field of anywhere between about 17 to 20 cars, um, and qualifying, whether it's wet, intermediate or dry, the whole grid is usually separated by less than two seconds, and, you know, a, a whole grid separated by two seconds, it, that's, that's insane, really. Yeah, it is. Just shows the quality. It does, it really does. Obviously, we've got, we've got some great drivers as well on the verge of getting promoted as well, so it's going to get even tighter next season. It's going to be one of the, the strongest leagues out there. Yeah, we've, we've got some guys in here. I mean, you've only got to look at the... Uh, I mean, time trial is different from, obviously, multiplayer because, obviously, the cars handle differently. I mean, time trial, everything's perfect. But when you're looking at the time trial leaderboards and, let's say, in the top ten, you've got five or six of the drivers in D1 and they're doing it at every single track. I mean, there's some guys in here that are just insanely quick. Oh, I've just seen a little cheeky overtake there from John Evan Terry on SJP in the final corner. Whether that's affected SJP's last, I've no idea, but that was a strange one. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit. Bit of, a, bit, bit of action in qualifying. Yeah, it's a bit. Unfortunately, as uh, John Levin Terry try not to get in the way there, pal. That's the last thing you want to do. I am watching you, mate. It's difficult in conditions like this because obviously in the dry, a lot of these guys are very similar on pace. Uh, but in the wet, there is a bit of a, a, a performance spread because obviously some guys are running a dry setup, some are running a wet setup, or they're just not confident in these conditions. And you will find that you'll be on the quick lap and you're catching the guy in front of you is also on the quick lap. Now, if both people are on the quick lap, you can't expect the guy in front to just jump out of the way. He's doing his thing like you. So uh, I'm not surprised to see people uh, doing uh, dive bombing or overtakes into some of the hairpins to just try and get ahead of them so they don't ruin their own lap. Yep. And John Evan Terry currently in third position. This is exactly what he wants and it's exactly what he needs. A strong qualifying like this. But we've seen it on numerous occasions, ain't we? He's, he's had a strong qualifying and he, j he just seems to bottle it in the race. Yeah, it's a real good shame because the last few races we've seen it's a real turn of pace. When we saw in uh, Singapore, he was he was looking very consistent uh, until he picked up unfortunately time penalties for contact and exceeding track limits. He would have been about fifth or sixth on the track. And again in Germany a few races ago, I remember he was watching him win, uh, leading the race, and he's uh, stuck it in the barrier and threw away a possible 25 points. So if he can just sort of calm down and just uh, not not cut the corners and not get involved in the incidents, I'm expecting John Terry to hopefully pick up a podium before the end of the season, which he so desperately needs. Yes, indeed. 
fantastic driver. Definitely not the kind of driver you'd expect to see in the relegation zone, but at the minute, third position, and well, he's currently, well, he's, he's, I think he's on an in lap because he's set to one time, very poor. Let's find a driver to go on board with Ali Barba, currently fourth. Can he improve? No, he's already down. Cliffy, currently in fifth, and I've noticed now the lap times are getting a bit slower, so I think it's that. I think it's that time for the switch. It may very well be. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looking at the yeah. moment uh, at the timing screens. Uh, a lot of the guys, in fact, virtually everyone is out on track at the moment. There's a few in the garage. Uh, just looking at the current tyre choices. Maxi Luke is in the garage, currently on pole position. He's already made the switch onto intermediate, so we're just waiting for him to come out on track. So it looks like the Maxi Luke is probably going to be the first guy to do it. And I reckon in probably a lap or well, about two minutes, it will be time for the, uh, for the Inters. Well, as we say that, Wesker has just put in a phenomenal lap to go from ninth up to third. So, great stuff from the Wesker, but that's not going to count eventually once these Inters come on. Who ain't we rode on board with yet? Let's have a look. I'm just looking at Cosworth Tom here. He looks like he's completing an outlap and going for another flying lap. He's currently down in 10th place. He might improve on this lap, actually. It's not too bad. and He doesn't. He stays 10th. But uh, Cosworth Tom, has, uh, we've uh, allowed him, if you like, to go back into qualifying. His connection issues at the start were causing a bit of lag. But it seems to calm down now. And uh, Cosworth Tom is pretty happy that he's able to qualify. Because, obviously, being down near the relegation zone, the last thing you want to be doing is starting at the back every race. Exactly. As we ride on board with Danny Morris very confident on this track it seems in practice sessions but it doesn't seem like he's got the same confidence in the wet because he's currently struggling down in ninth position as he goes into the pits Cosworth Tom we'll come back to him in a minute we've got Mark Demand another driver we've heard big things about for this race today down in 11th at the minute can he improve I think he might just about do it he's got his drop down to 11th now as well so he can't he stays 11th then so Mark Demand He's got his work cut out. Oh, Cliffy's taken pole. Cliffy's taken pole. 50.4. <laughs> so Cliffy then, absolutely sensational lap, but the question is, is there going to be enough time for this to go to Inters? Can Cliffy hold on to that? But we have just lost Merck. So will that affect his um, current qualifying position? Uh, has he left the session or retired? He's left the session, lost connection. Oh dear, yes, he will almost certainly be starting towards the back because I believe a lot of his guys are now in the pits and they're going to be making the switch onto the intermediate tyres. Yep, there's Raphael one pits. Cosworth Tom. Going up to the final corner, can he improve his time? Not very often we see him qualifying, so it's nice to get on board with him, but typically he goes into the pits. <laughs> Mystic Joker's on a hot lap, but... He's currently two tenths down in sector one. And it's pretty close in sector two then. So Mystic Joker, the American championship leader, absolutely smashing it. Can he go pole for now? It could have been a lot, a long way clearer. If only he never rage quitted in Monaco and rage quitted in Singapore. I mean, them points could come costly at the end of the season. Yeah, that's it. You should always keep going. As Mark Demand here gets his drift on, coming around the tight right hand at the top of the hill. Down the back straight now. No DRS, of course, in these conditions. In fact, I'd be very surprised if we see DRS on the intermediate tyres. Mark Demand's at the moment in 11th place. We were expecting him to be a bit more competitive. However, this is the wet, not in the dry. And he's, uh, yep, he's, he's abandoned that in the pits. Tom Pritt is out on intermediate tyres. Yep. Uh, Flair Just looks like he's leaving on Inters, so it looks like it's the go time now for Inters. Yes, indeed. So we are on board with Tom Pretty. It's going to be like uh, it's like what we've seen quite a lot, quite recently. It's going to, it, it is going to come down to that last second, the last lap. Whoever's last out is probably going to get the fastest lap. Yep. I think it will <laughs> almost certainly come down to that. Wesker's now at intermediates. Adi Barba's at yeah. It's, it's go time. Everyone's out on Inters now, and I'm expecting most of these guys to have fueled up for about two or three laps. I'm expecting. I don't. I'd be very surprised if anyone's got enough time to go around time lap, come back in for another one. So I think these guys that are leaving the pits now, and the Inters are committing themselves to two or three hot laps. So uh, as long as they don't stick it in the wall or burn up them tyres, they should get a decent time out of it. Yes, indeed. Tom's still on his out lap. I think Tom will be quite happy, to be honest, with a mid-table finish for this season, but I think he's definitely going to have to improve next season. 
yeah, there's a there's a few guys that are almost certainly going to be coming up from Division Two. I'm not going to name names. I don't want to put any pressure on them, but um, they've certainly got the pace to uh, to be consistently in the uh, upper midfield. And if you're sort of there at the moment in Division One, you could end up finding yourself slipping down the order a little bit. So uh, some of these guys have improved quite well, but they might need just a little bit more next season if they want to remain competitive. Yes, indeed. So here comes Tom Pretty then. Oh. I've just switched him back to them. Did uh, I mean, I did, did Radic join? I don't think he did, did he? No, I don't think Radic did. Still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Sorry, I had my microphone on mute for a second. Uh, yeah, Radic, uh, I don't think has rejoined. I don't think Beastas has rejoined. Merck has rejoined, but he's uh, a little bit disappointed that he's probably going to be starting near the back. Yep. You can't blame him to be disappointed. You cannot blame him. But Tom Pretty, even on the intermediates, he's only one tenth quicker, so not exactly going to plan at the minute for Tom. I mean, he will improve on his own lap time, obviously, but not for very long. Not with everyone out on the inters now. Now these conditions are going to continually improve and like you said it very well could be the last person over the line will take a pole or if not pole a very good qualifying position because these, uh, these track conditions are improving all the time. <clears throat> yep. And even Tom set to two, it's, it's similar with the leader so it's not really looking good at the minute for Tom. Well, Flair's just done a 26.4 in Sector 1, which is three temps quicker than John Heaven Terry's personal best, because John Heaven Terry's currently purple in Sector 1. So, uh, the conditions are working well for Flair at the moment, at least. It's going to be interesting. So, here comes Tom, then. Where can his lap time put him at the minute? He's currently sat in 12th. I'm guessing it will put him at the front of the grid. But the question is, how long for? Here he comes, then. See what kind of lap times we've got going on now. And it does go pole, but how long for is the question? Who's next to come over the line? It's looking like it could be SJP. No, he's on that outlap. Mark Demand, outlap. We've got anyone close. We've got Flair, as you said. So Flair then. Very quick driver. Needs keeping it on his time because this could be the one to beat. And it does go pole. Yeah, I think. 148. That's a flying lap. Just running on board of West Korea. I'm expecting him to improve. He goes second on a 49.5. So he's seven tenths off a of flare. Uh, three guys that have set a lap time and enters are first, second, and third. So I'm expecting, yeah, these, uh, these uh, lap times are going to keep dropping, I think. Yep. And here comes Adi Baba then. Can he take pole for the time being? It's going to be chop and change right to the end here in Malaysia. Can Eddie Barbar get it up the front of the grid? He does, he goes second. Still got the big boys to do their laps though, Maxi, Mystic. If we can find any of them. Yeah, Raphael 1's put his time in on the Inters. It's only good for fifth place, which is the slowest of the intermediate runners. So uh, his pace isn't that great. He's a second and a half off of Flair. Flair's a very good lap there for Flair. There it is, Mr. Joker. He's down in sector one, so it's not going quite to plan at the minute for the American. He's a long way down, so we'll come back to him later. Danny Morris coming around the final corner. Currently in 11th. Is that going to change? No, it's not. Danny Morris stays 11th, and that's on the Inters, so not going to plan. Can Cosworth Tom improve in the manner? Desperate for points today, Tom. And he goes third. It's a great lap. And if Cosworth Tom, if he can hold it up there at the front of the grid, the relegation battle could be getting interesting after today's race, Lily. Yeah, but he's, unfortunately, we've only got 13 seconds left, which means both me and Richie are going to lose the cameras in a minute. So we've got to have a mad scramble round to jump on board of people to see if they can improve. But we're looking at the likes here of here. I mean, yeah, I, SJ, SJP's I'll gone fifth. Raphael Juan is on an absolute flyer. If we can get back on board of him when the camera's cut off, I think he could of a snatch pole or second here at the minute where is he there he is Raphael one in the relegation battle desperate for big points just like Cosworth Tom Cosworth Tom's got his car up the top end of the grid so Raphael needs to match him can he do it at the minute he's currently ninth and he goes seventh so it didn't quite work out in the end for Raphael 
if we can just change to somebody else. Who we got? Who we got? Where's Mystic? Well, I've jumped on board with Maxi Luca. Um, I know he's on a flying oh, yeah. lap and he hasn't set um, a good time yet. And he was, I think, second on the wet tyre. So I'm expecting him to again be up there again. He's just coming in the final corner at the moment. Don't know his sector times, have no idea. So here he comes out the final corner. Can Maxi now get back up to second place or even better take pole? It is pole. He's gone pole. Maxi Luca takes provisional pole at the moment. Yeah, but Mystic Joker's still out there on a the flyer. So is Flair, Mark the Man, so it could change again. Mark the Man's retired, I'm not sure what position he was in. But he's out of qualifying as we ride on board with Flair. But we will see Mystic Joker cross the line first, because he is in 30 position. Yet to set a hot lap on the Inters. And the track, it might have been better for him than it was for Maxi. So Mystic Joker, great opportunity then. Can he take Paul? No, it's only fifth, the championship leader, Mystic Joker. Hugely disappointing lap time. Down in fifth, but you've got to be honest, he's that far in front of the table. He can afford to do it at the minute, but here comes Flair. Can he snatch Paul off Maxi? He's the last car to try. And it's only four 